All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. My name is Joe Zanka, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage. And today I'm with my guest, Katie Burkhart of Matter Pulse and Matter 7, two businesses. Katie, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm really excited to talk to you. I um, I did a little bit of research on your company and I love um, you know, the idea. There's there's so many different things you can do with branding, but um, I'd love to hear from you, you know, what you guys um, are doing at, at both businesses on a daily basis. Absolutely. Um, so Matter 7 uh, was my first company founded uh, about 10 years ago now, um, and we build brands um, for purpose-driven organizations. Um, and what that means is we work with um, a core strategy, uh, the purpose-driven strategic model, which includes purpose, um, vision, mission, values, um, and story. And we really center that um, for not only the brand, but the whole business. Um, and then we have a seven-step process where we actually, we start there and then we, we use the remaining six steps to build out the rest of the brand and actually launch it. Um, and we're really fortunate to work with um, social entrepreneurs, nonprofits, even more traditional companies that are really um, committed to infusing their purpose into everything that they do, um, which is, I think, one of the things that um, is unique about our company and how we work, as well as our sort of commitment to being really thoughtful, as well as to, you know, get really tangible things done. Um, brand is something that can turn really ephemeral really quickly, um, but that does not actually move the business forward in a lot of cases. So we're, we're very committed to finding that balance between, you know, being really smart, being really sharp, um, but also what's, what's going to advance you to the next step uh, in, in your business journey. My second company, uh, which was founded, I think, February is going to be our third birthday. Um, yeah, uh, was founded as an was originally going to be just an offshoot of uh, Matter Seven uh, because we were running into this problem where we were building that core strategy, which was supposed to be for the whole business. And what we would find six months, a year later from the branding, um, is they weren't really making very aligned decisions. Um, and they would either be offering a new program or a new product or putting out messaging that really had nothing to do um, with the brand that we put in place, specifically with the core strategy that we put in place. And we were like, okay, guys, you're like diluting your own efforts. Um, <laughs> how do we make this better? And usually the answer was, well, we need to rebrand. And we're like, no, like <laughs> the brand isn't the problem. Cause like, if we rebrand, you're just going to do the same thing with the new brand. Um, so I really took a big step back um, and did a lot of research to try to figure out like, is it me? Could we be delivering this better to clients? Is there, is there a gap that's missing? Um, and what we determined was that it's actually really hard to run a purpose-driven organization um, for reasons that have been pretty well documented from the Harvard Business Review to others. Um, and that um, there are a lot of benefits to the model. Like we were not crazy, it is actually a good idea. Um, and so we sat down to say, okay, how do we solve that? So what Matter Pulse does is it actually helps social, or social enterprises run and grow against the double bottom line. Um, Gotcha. basically to truly be a purpose-driven organization, um, to use the core strategy as an actual strategy, um, and then have an integrated action plan that allows them to track information on both profit and purpose metrics, um, and really be able to look at how those things relate together, um, and then be able to demonstrate that they're actually moving the needle across um, both points, um, purpose and profit. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, it's super important, um, you know, especially if, as, as your business progresses, I feel like, you know, it just becomes more and more important to try to define what you want your brand to stand for. Um, yep. But then, you know, it, 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 it is very difficult to do. I mean, um, and it's difficult to stay consistent, you know, within that, because, you know, I feel like oftentimes, at least, you know, from my own experiences, you know, you start off with a business plan um, and you know what you want your, your brand to, to represent, you know, I guess your personal core values as much as you can. But, um, but then trying to figure out, you know, how you can position it in a way that others can understand exactly what you stand for. Um, and honestly, it needs to be done like pretty quickly, like, it, like not like in the sense of like, you need to get that message across fast um, when you're, when you're putting it in front of the, the consumer, especially in 2021, when, when we're just getting like bombarded with things all day. <laughs> hundred um, percent. And there's um, some really good research and data out there because I really try to keep up with as much as I possibly can, um, that, you know, that's what consumers are looking for. But even more importantly, you know, it's the step that most entrepreneurs skip, that, that your first audience, wrong word, but you're, the first group of people you really want to engage is actually your employees, your team. Um, and if there's a group of people who really need to understand 
you know, what the core strategy of the company is and understand that purpose and really understand the mission, then they also need to understand, well, what role do I play in helping to make that happen? Sure. Um, so that they're really engaged and helping you to all push to, forward together. Um, that's usually a big, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the conversation to the team is like totally different than what's going out to everybody else. Really, it shouldn't be. And we should all be working from the same strategy, telling the same story, um, you know, certainly with with slight shifts based on, on what your perspective is. Um, but it's it's a big step that I think a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes miss or you know, really ambitious visionary founders somewhat assume that people will just get it because they have it um, versus recognizing that like as my company grows, I have to really put in effort to make sure that all you know my wave of 30, 50, 60 new hires is as engaged as the first two people I hired. Definitely, definitely. Oh, it's it's incredibly important. And it's, it is, like you said, ha trying not to have that like natural assumption is, um, is hard because yeah. you, I think like, it's like one, you assume, but two, you just want it to be natural, like naturally happen because you're so busy, like trying to run the business. You're just like, all right, I hope that everyone else sees like what we're trying to do here. <laughs> and then you just, keep yeah. it, you know, so how did you get into this? How did, how did this um, become a thing? You know, how did you recognize this as an opportunity? Well, for the, the original um, company, the branding firm, I actually started the business uh, quite by accident. Um, I actually incorporated, I didn't really intend to run a company. It was just going to be me. Um, and originally I did a, a very large range of things that, that fall under the header of design, um, from physical design, theatrical design, more creative design, brand design, digital, lots of stuff, um, and was like, okay, what do we want to do? And what I figured out very, very quickly was nonprofits specifically um, were getting really poor service. Um, and it was like, well, you know, I have family that's worked in nonprofits for a long time. You know, just because you're a nonprofit doesn't mean that what you're doing is less important. Um, and I have a real um, issue with the whole, you know, nonprofits shouldn't spend money um, concept that we've we've sort of put out there and everybody operates under you know, because it's not true. If you do, just like a business, if you don't invest money in things like people or marketing or whatever, it is very difficult to actually grow your, you know, to fulfill your mission and grow your impact. Sure. Um, however, you know, we, I appreciated that, you know, that's a change that's going to take a long time. You know, they're not necessarily going to spend a fortune. So how do I really build a firm that's going to offer exactly the services that they need in an effective and efficient way um, to help them um, hopefully better, you know, first and foremost, better communicate who they are so that they can hopefully bring in capital, engage donors, you know, and, and make the impact mm -hmm. they want to make. So that's how I originally got into that. And then just over the years have slowly but surely focused in on, you know, trying to find that balance between where do, do I and my team really enjoy working? What are the types of things we like to work on? And then more importantly, like where do the clients find the most value and really working to make sure that everything we're doing is at that, that really special intersection um, of value uh, to make sure that we're, we're delivering the things that they value the most um, and the clients are getting the value that they really need. Um, and that's been a great journey of really sort of pulling away, you know, as opposed to most businesses ad services. In our case, we've actually been taking them away, finding smart strategic partners for things that we don't want to specialize in and really trying to stick to what it is that we do best and then doing it better and better each time. Yeah, I think that's super important, especially with like an agency type model. Um, you know, you get to a certain point at the beginning, I'm sure you you would agree probably like with some of your first clients were trying to, you know, be almost make like a custom plan for each individual. Like, yes. All right. They want to run, you know, Google ads and they want to do this and that. So, all right, we'll do that for them. And then, you know, these guys, Google ads, maybe not, but they need, you know, help on their social media platforms. They need, so it's, it's tough at the beginning because you want to be everything to everybody. But um, I feel like your approach now is exactly what you need to be doing. It's like, all right, what do we want to be doing? Start off with like, you know, why do we want yeah. to do this? And then what are we best at? And if you can combine those and just stick in that, like you said, you'll, every time you do it, you'll get a little bit better and learn a little bit more and then improve your process to the point where, you know, you'll end up being known as the top, one of the top providers of a specific thing. And then, exactly. and, and I think that, um, you know, I've, I've heard from a lot of people on here and I've been just in my own life to recognize that, you know, acknowledging that you don't need to be the best at everything is um, 
is the key to being a good business owner because there are people out there that are better at certain things than 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 you than me, and um and you know you can make strategic relationships where it allows you to put as much time as possible into doing what you want to do and doing what you're best at while simultaneously still doing you know some other things that a team member can can do probably even oftentimes better than you can. Absolutely. And I think um, one of the big things or, or pieces of advice I have and I give freely um, to other agency owners and colleagues is like, it's not about you, you know, and I think that's a hard thing as an entrepreneur, because like you got into your business, you're excited about your business. I am an unapologetic workaholic. Like I love my business and what I do, but it's not about me. Um, it's really about doing good work. Um, hopefully for good people that you're excited to do good work for. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think once you make that mental shift, it's like, okay, well, the client needs this. I'm not going to give it to them really well. How do I get them to someone who's going to give that to them really well so that they can be successful? Um, and we've done a lot with partnerships to, to able to be like, oh, you need social media. This is our go-to. Oh, you need this. This is our go-to. Um, and knowing who they are and making sure that, you know, good people get connected to good people. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. I love that approach. Um, I think that's important with everything you do to even like, you know, we like to tell our salespeople, you know, if you approach a sale, like with, with a client or a new customer, and it's, you know, you're thinking in the back of your head, okay, this is like commission, or this is like, I need, I'm going to make, I need to make this sale for on-demand storage. Then I feel like oftentimes it's just not going to happen. Whereas if you approach a sale with, okay, what I'm giving this person is 100% going to help them or I know in the background, like I'm talking, I'm making, I'm having this discussion because I can provide something that's going to be helpful and, and make, you know, the person who's on the end of, other end of the call's life better in some way, shape or form. Then one, you sell more captivatingly, but two, it's like, all right, well, you made it about them now. And it has to be about them. And then the more you make everything about them, you know, sales will start to trickle in um, just because you're doing it for the right reasons. Whereas if you're doing it for the, like, I need to shove this, you know, I need to meet like numbers. You know, that's not the right reason. Often. Yeah. It doesn't end up being, it doesn't end up driving the right results either. Uh, generally speaking, no. Um, and I think people feel that, you know, everyone, you know, it's that phrase, like everyone knows when they're being sold to, you know, and making sure that your goal is to help them. And I think it doesn't really matter what it is that you do, you know, you're there to make their life better. Um, and that's usually what we talk to clients about. How do you make this person's life better? You know, like very specifically, what specifically do you do that makes their life better? Um, and how do you make their life better? Um, because I think the more that you know that, the more that you understand that, the more that you can talk about that in the words that the client is going to use, um, the more effective that you're going to reach people and hopefully actually help them do or become whatever it is that, that, you do um because definitely. everybody's is different definitely definitely so you kind of like you mentioned happened into this whole you know your business a little, in a way um and now you know you just mentioned obviously you know how often you find yourself working if you could go back to day one of you know kind of starting these companies what would you tell yourself to be prepared for knowing what you know now as you know someone who's a ceo running a company two companies on a day-to-day -day basis um, I would say the biggest, you know, I always have different answers to this, depending on when you ask me. Um, but, but the thing that's sort of hitting me right now is like, invest in this, invest in yourself early, whatever that means for you. Sure. Um, and for me, that was like getting a virtual assistant, um, who is like, I, I would cry if she up and left tomorrow, um, because she's so helpful to making sure that I can do the things that I need to do. Um, I brought on a business coach last year, a, amazing investment, not one that I ever thought I would make because I always operated with this, like, well, I can do it myself. I can figure it out. Like, you know, let me get online and do some research. Let me, you know, talk to a colleague. And it's like, all of those are good things. You know, I don't want to turn you down from self-education or anything like that. Um, but there's a point at which it's like, what help do you need? And then not being afraid to spend money to get the help because it will pay off. Um, and part of the reason that I chose the things that I chose to invest in was somebody somewhere dropped this quote. I have no idea who said it 
which was never take advice from someone who isn't where you want to be. Um, and I was like, that's really, that's really good advice. So I was like, okay, when I look out at like fellow business colleagues, people who are being really successful, like what are they doing that I'm not doing? And one of the first things that I identified was like, they have a coach, they have an assistant, like they're, they're spending money, they're, they're investing in themselves to make sure that they are able to do the things that they need to do um, and have the mental space, energy, support that they need to really deliver. Um, and that's something that I made a big shift last year and we're continuing to make a shift um, this year to make sure um, that, that I'm where I need to be. Um, and then for some people, they'll add like additional education. That was one that like I read incessantly and, and I'm always trying to educate. That one was less of an issue for me, um, but making time for that and saying like, this is not unproductive. This actually is productive and valuable and something that I need to do. Um, that those are one of the things I put out there, even down to things like I did my own brand, which is not surprising to people. They're like, we run a branding firm. Of course you did your own brand. I, I, I've hated the process because I've done it twice now, every time, like it's not fun to do your own branding. So like whatever, you know, I know for people, um, there was a great article I read recently that, and I'm going to be sharing it in my newsletter soon. Um, about like, what does it mean to bootstrap? And it's just been one of the best, like the way he expressed it was incredibly blunt, but, but was one of the best ways to explain it, which is bootstrapping doesn't mean you don't spend money. You know, you do, and your hourly rate is money. Like you're spending time, which costs money. Yep. You know, it's about being really selective with what you put capital into, but it doesn't mean you don't spend capital. Um, and that's been something that I've gotten with the second company more willing to be like, okay, who do we pay? Like, who do we need to bring in? In, you know, to make sure that we're getting what we need so that this is really effective, or we're just going to do it a whole bunch of times badly, which still costs money. Um, and now we're, we're months into it and not where we really want to be. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you just said um, a lot of really important, powerful things in that. Um, and I, I agree with pretty much everything you said. Um, and especially when it comes to taking advice from people who are places where you want to be. I mean, I think it's so important. I think always looking up and seeing, okay, I'm chasing you know, this, but it's important to recognize, I think a lot of time, and it's hard to at the beginning, but like, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people who um, who have had success are willing to share and willing to give back. I think that's just like an inherent trait when it comes to that. I don't know. I, I've talked to, you know, like I said to you before the show, like 60 or 70 people already on, on just this podcast alone. And yeah. um, all of which are successful, all different ages, uh, all different industries, but their like willingness to open up and their willingness to give back information that they've learned throughout their career is, is, is consistent across the board. So having, knowing that, you know, you should be putting yourself in a position where, you know, you can try to build like a, a readily available kind of little network around you where you can get advice from people like that. And like you said, you know, sometimes it's, you, I mean, it's good to invest in that. I've also heard recently more than ever, and I haven't made the step yet, but I think I'm going to, that making an investment into a coach is something like you said that you're not like necessarily out thinking that you're going to do, but it, um, there's a huge ROI on it all the time. And I think that, that that's good advice to hear too, because it's, it's something that, you know, at the, it's tough during the bootstrapping phase. I think you pointed out, you have to spend money to grow a business, but figuring out what is going to get you the best ROI is a big time challenge. Um, but knowing that something like that, you know, consistently again across the board from what I've heard um, has a tremendous ROI is good to hear. And I think it's good for the listeners to hear because if they're going to start something, you can, you can start right away with a coach. I mean, they, you know, you, yeah. you need, you need a coach, you know, the best exactly. athletes in the world have coaches. I mean, well, exactly. they, everyone has coaches. And I think it depends on, you know, what do you want? Like I was very persnickety and like which coach I wanted and, and what I wanted out of that relationship. You know, we do not spend a whole lot of time talking about work-life balance because that wasn't my issue. Um, and I was like, that's not what I'm looking for. You know, here's what I'm looking for. So I picked a coach who's an entrepreneur himself um, and runs several businesses on top of being a coach. So it's like, you get that, the, I got the perspective I wanted. And I think part of the reason I wanted it more than anything else um, is because I'm a solo founder, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't have a co-founder. I don't have a founding team. Like it's just me. Um, so just, just at a baseline, the value of being able to get on and sort of air the dirty laundry and be like, here's where I'm not sure if I'm making the right decision. What do you think? Right. Um, and knowing that you're going to get a good response back is really valuable. Um, and you're going to get a consistent response because if you just take that question to like everyone in your network, 
A, they're only so invested, which is not, not a bad thing. Like they've got their whole business going on. They're going to give you an off the, off the cuff response. Um, and you very well may get six different responses. Whereas like if you've invested, you're investing in the coach as much as the coach is investing in you, you know, there's, there's a level of trust that like, this is a good answer and we're going to stick with it. Um, and, and this is how we're going to move things forward. So for anybody doing it, like take your time, do your research, you know, get some referrals, make sure that you're happy with the way they work and, and the types of things they work on. All coaches are different. Um, and depending on, you know, what you're looking for help with, you know, pick one that's going to fit you. Yeah, no, it's really good advice. And the bootstrapping thing too. I mean, um, I, it's funny because when you bootstrap a company, you have to, like you said, learn from mistakes, learn from money that you spent that didn't result in an ROI. And then be cautious as you pick what you, you know, are going to spend on and, and, um, and how are you going to spend it? But like you said, you do need to keep, you know, investing it to move forward um but i i always you know at least on a personal way i know too like i think that it's the best it's not easy to go grab you know a million dollar investment i mean by any means it's not an easy thing to do um but you know sometimes i get caught up in like the entrepreneurial culture nowadays where it's like that's a lot of people look at that as like that's almost like, like step one it's like oh I, I have a good idea i'm just gonna go get an investment yeah. and it's like you don't like you might have a plan on paper what you're going to do with that investment, but you're going to waste a lot of it if you haven't like tried yeah. doing it on your own with your own money. And like, you know, investing your own money, investing your own capital that you worked, sweat, you know, stayed up all night trying to gain, you, you finally got it. And then you have to deploy it properly and learn from what you did and then reevaluate if it's worth continuing to spend or not. That's how you're going to learn how to spend money effectively, not yeah. just by raising it and thinking like, oh, you know, pay per clicks is what I have to do. And you just dump it in. And then, it's yeah. like, you know, shit, we just spent $500,000 on paper clicks. It's like, what just happened? Yeah. Like, it's bootstrapping it's is important. I think it's an important first step and one that like I, I did not want to raise capital and, and I have no intention of raising more capital than is absolutely necessary to run my business, basically because, you know, you're giving away pieces of your company, you know, and it's like, you worked really hard for it. You're like, are you sure you want to give pieces away? You know, like, think about that before you do it. You know, I'm willing to bet that for a lot of, you know, Matter Pulse is a, is a company I expect to be more high growth software technology company. So, you know, I have no delusions that we're going to be able to go without capital investment if we really want to grow and, and make a go with this. Um, however, you know, don't, don't bring that in before you're really ready. Cause you're right. There is this, like, I have a startup, therefore I have to raise capital. Like raising capital is no fun. You know, like it takes a lot of time away from like actually developing your business, right. talking to potential customers. Like, do we even have a business anyone will pay for? Um, the best advice I got, which was really my coach was like, go out and and sell something, you know, like see if you can get, you know, we have our first two customers, you know, which, which was started at the end of 2020, you know, where he's like, sell it to a couple of people, like whatever you have, you know, just to be able to prove out that someone will buy it because it may even change like what you raise capital around based on, you know, cause there's that I asked prospective person what they thought about my product. And this was the feedback I got. Yeah. Now I went to somebody and said, would you buy it? You know, and all of a sudden you might get different feedback based on not whether or not they think it's a cool idea, but whether or not they're willing to pay for it, which <laughs> yeah. you know, it only is a business if they'll pay for it. And there is a big difference. There's an important, yes. you know what I mean? I think a lot of people are going to tell you that they think something's a pretty good idea. Or maybe they'll be yeah. totally blunt with you and say, Hey, that idea stinks, but they're my favorite people. You will, well, you'll find out if it, if it stinks or not by asking them if they're willing to pay for it, <laughs> because yeah. that's when they'll tell you, oh, oh, this is how I really feel. No, I don't think it's worth it. Um, yeah. I agree with you. And you'll waste a lot of time thinking that something's worth it. I mean, everyone has their own opinions. Everyone, you know, is involved in different things. Um, coming up with something and then not selling it prior to going out and trying to, you know, develop it more is, I mean, you'll end up oftentimes wasting time. You know, just yeah. get that feedback right off of that. Um, so one question I like to ask, you know, most founders is how technology is playing a role in what they do. Um, how are you seeing, you know, 2021, how are you seeing technology like um, disrupt, I guess, or in taking, taking part in the branding world? And, um, you know, how are you guys kind of looking to keep up with trends or, or actually one question I like to ask is, you know, maybe despite what's holding, what, what's disrupting what's being disrupted by technology? What do you kind of see holding true, you know, based on things that you've seen in the past? 
Um, you know, I can, uh, let me try to answer both those questions. So uh, one of the things that, that I would say is like, yes, there are things out there where like an AI will create your logo for you. And like, yeah. people are like, branding is gone. And I'm like, okay, maybe if you're like looking to save a lot of money, you can get an acceptable logo for a cheaper rate. But like, that was true when Fiverr existed. Like, I don't know that that's as big as a disruption as it sounds. Um, and the part that really goes into a brand, I think still really requires a person, which is really developing that core strategy fundamentally, making sure you understand, you know, who you are as a brand, what you do for other people, why is it valuable? Um, and being able to communicate that effectively, I think is still something that requires people support. Um, and, and I always say to people, even if you're only bringing in a brander because you need outside perspective, do it because it is very, it is, it is nigh impossible to brand yourself. You have no perspective on yourself right, um, right. and really making sure that that's an effective process, not only for marketing, which is how most people think about branding, but to engage all of your stakeholders, to make sure that your, your funders are engaged, to make sure your team is engaged. You know, you know how you're reaching out to that customer. How are you really building that community effectively? So I see that as still being very much a people thing, but hopefully continuing to be a multi-stakeholder conversation versus like, well, the marketing department's in charge of that. It's like, <laughs> well, not exactly. Um, you know, one of the areas that I hope will get more involved with that, and I'll come back to this in a second, is actually the finance department, which nobody talks about, and I think is a real shame. We'll get back to that in a second. Where I think you're seeing, I don't know if disruption is the right word. To me, it's like, things that are making our lives better um, is the no code revolution, um, especially for a lot of the groups that we work with. You know, having $50,000 for a website is not a realistic proposition. Um, so looking at things like Webflow, looking at some of the other no code Zapier integrations, um, things that they can do quickly um, for less capital upfront in most cases, and definitely for less capital to maintain um, is giving them a lot of ways to say like, okay, we can give this a try. And if it's wrong, we can probably adjust um, versus, okay, we invested 50 grand. Like we're pretty much stuck with this bad boy for the next three years, um, right, which right. I think is, is less realistic, um, coupled with the fact that technology is also breeding more personalization and increasingly more touch points. So really getting, which has always been true, um, but really getting that brand is not just your logo, your fonts and your colors, that it's everything that you do um, is becoming increasingly more important and how many places you have to do it is only growing. So I'm, I'm hoping that that all continues to happen. For Matter Pulse, we're actually hoping that we are going to be a big part of the technology disruption in that um, we really need to move being purpose driven from being a, an empty, in a lot of cases, empty marketing slogan to an actual business model. How do we really get people to operationalize this and understand how it's working throughout their whole company? And I think yeah. this is where that um, CFO engagement really comes in because a lot of being purpose driven, you know, people assume that that means that we care about our aspirational goals. We don't care about money. And that's a really big misnomer. Um, to be purpose driven, you actually care about both um, because you cannot increase your impact without also increasing your capital. And if you're doing it right, your purpose is inextricably linked to whatever your, your, core business model is, um, you know, you're selling a product that is delivering a certain impact. Um, so you have to be able to grow both at the same time. And I think that's where, you know, we've always sort of seen CFOs and finance people as like, well, they're the numbers guys. They sort of sit in the back and they make spreadsheets all day. Um, and the reality is they have a really big role to play as part of this conversation for where does money come from and where does it go? And is that or, or is that not um, advancing our purpose and making for a healthy organization at the same time? Um, and, and our software is hopefully going to make that an easier and again, more accessible conversation. Oh, wow. That's really interesting to think about, you know, and, uh, and it's, it's funny because you would obviously think like, oh, you know, we'll just link the marketing department or the marketing person up with you guys and you guys can take it from there. And it's yeah. so much, it's so much deeper than that. You know I mean? It, it, like the brand is like the foundation of the company, you know, what it stands yes. on, what, you know, so it, it takes, like you said, everybody being involved. It takes building out, you know, each team member that you come on, bring on each team member that's there, like fully understanding what, uh, what you guys are doing. You know I mean? The brand yes. is almost like, what are you doing? And um, yeah, no, that, so like you said, having that involvement from the very beginning. And then I did like what you said about, um, you know, the no code thing. I think that's so important nowadays. I think it's because 
you can get a lot done. There's so many different plugins that you can use that are like incredible. You know what I mean? That, um, that do a lot for, for being able to effectively get, you know, business off the ground, yep. deploy, you know, different, like very streamlined technology into your, into your business, um, for not much money. Whereas I think beforehand, even when I was getting started, you know, four and a half years ago, you know, there's this big stigma of like, okay, well, you guys want a, a website built? Like it's going to be, like you said, you know, $20,000, $50,000, like, and we've been able to, you know, we've had three iterations of our website to this point, but we've been able to do it in ways where, you know, you combine some basic customized coding with things that already exist. And you get like an incredible product at the end of the day that, that really does exactly what you need to do. Um, and in that way, like you said, I mean, it doesn't need to be this giant overhead that like yeah. is hanging over the top of the company. You can, I mean, maybe one day, but, um, but definitely not to get started. No. And, and I think that there's, um, you know, it's giving a lot more opportunity, you know, and people are figuring out how to, to your point, like tie different products together. And that's become a lot easier so that you can take your like simple website and tie it to, uh, you know, the zap that makes integrating to this really simple um, versus like you would have needed to bring in a developer and then put that integration together in order to get it to work back in the day. Um, so even simple things like that have, has taken weight off of um, so that you can, you know, keep costs low, but, but more importantly, iterate as needed um, to be like, okay, well, we tried this and it didn't work. You know, we grew. So like that CRM, we just spent a whole bunch of money getting you to integrate, like we're not using it anymore. So we got to do that again. Um, so, so those are all great things. Um, and I want to back up to a point you said where, you know, brand is really the foundation for everything you're doing because it's what you do. Um, and I would say that it's, it's, it's not only what you do, but it's why do you do it? And more yeah. importantly, why does it matter? Um, which is, sure. is often the question that gets lost um, because especially with purpose-driven organizations um, and very ambitious visionary leaders, they get very into their why, but don't always answer the question, why does it matter? Because it's got to matter to somebody else, not just to you. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, no, it, it has to, it has to. And I, I do backtrack to the purpose-driven organizations. Yeah, that's what you guys are, are striving to create and work and, yes. and work with. I mean, and, you know, inherently, I think oftentimes, like you said, the brand matters to the organization, but, you know, you, the, the purpose of what you guys are trying to create is, okay, you know, how do we get that passion to your customer now? You know, how do, how do we get it to, how do we get them to care as much as you do? Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of great brands out there when we go down a, a rabbit hole trying to talk about all the different ones, but um, that are so good at, at, at that, you know, what I mean, getting people to buy and getting people to genuinely care about like how that company is doing um, or care about, you know, what they're doing. One new one I, I just saw just to touch upon, you know, a brand like Chewy that uh, the dog company, I don't know if you pay much attention to them, um, but they're, they're like pet, pet yeah. wellness. Um they have some amazing things that they've integrated that like, you know, just genuinely like it, it just take it to the next level, but like, you know, talk about why are they doing it? And like, it, it, they, they make you feel like, you know, like they genuinely care about you and your pet and the relationship that they have, not just you buying dog food from them, but yeah. like, you know, I had um, a friend of mine, dog, unfortunately like had passed away and they sent like a, a painting of a picture of the dog. I don't even know how they did it. Like, they like found it on social media yeah. and like had someone paint it, sent it to them like as this caring package, like, you know, hey, you don't need dog food anymore. But like, here's, it, it was amazing. It's like, it just yeah. like, why are you doing it? Because they want the healthiest relationship between pet owner and, and, and pet. Yeah. It's like, and, amazing. And, yeah, it's that human to human relationship. Like you human just lost your pet. So me human is going to send you something human to, to empathize with the fact that, that you've lost your pet um, sure. versus, you know, sending you a, a, you know, like not paying attention to the fact that your pet has passed away, which would be really bad, you know, or, you know, trying to send you some type of promotion for like going and getting a new pet, which on some ways would be even worse. But like mm -hmm. people do that because they're like, well, we want them to spend more money with us. And I'm like, yeah, but like, recognizing that they just lost their beloved animal is probably going to be more likely to get them to spend money with you in the future um, than being insensitive to where they are right now. Definitely. Definitely. So Katie, this has been great so far. I mean, um, one question I like to ask to end, you know, most of these interviews is, is you, you mentioned too, that you do a lot of reading. Um, do you have a book recommendation that you would, um, you know, put out to anybody listening now that you think, you know, has either inspired you in some way, or maybe it's just something that you've enjoyed reading? 
a book that I've been recommending and I, I was really fortunate that I actually got to talk to the author on Friday, which was- No way. Um, is the book Grow the Pie um, by Alex Edmonds, which is for um, one of the best books that I've read on purpose-driven business. And the reason that I like it is probably threefold. One, it's highly pragmatic, um, but more importantly, it's using what I think is one of the best um, and much more closely aligned with our or my definition of what it means to be purpose-driven, because um, unfortunately people are sort of using the word with very broad strokes and it's not helpful. Um, two, uh, he's able, he's actually a professor of finance. Um, so he was able to really bring in the money component um, as to how these things are working mm -hmm. um, and is really tackling that three is really tackling that how do I tie in the long-term value creation, which is a big roadblock for a lot of organizations because we are so trained to run on like, well, did I hit my stats this quarter? You know, it doesn't matter what happens after I hit my stats this quarter. You know, we're not thinking about the long term, even though he's a researcher, all the research indicates that long-term value creation will make for a healthier business, but that seems reasonable and rational. Um, but most people don't quite know how to do it. Um, so he does a really nice job about talking about that also. Definitely. And it's so easy to see now that you're explaining it, you know, how important it is to tie the finance person to all of these conversations because, you know, I think everybody would agree that they want, you know, their brand to be um, as, as robust as, as they envision it being, you know, one day when they're at the, the pinnacle of their company. Um, but then when it comes time to actually, you know, invest, it might, it, sometimes it might not be the right time. Sometimes it might not be, you know, there might not be money set aside to do it. Yeah. And sometimes you just might not understand like, hey, an investment over here, trickles down into all these other buckets as well. You know what I mean? You might not be able to see it. Whereas someone who's running the day-to-day -day finances can, can put together models that, you know, would explain why you're doing what you're doing, which really yeah. helps it. And I, I, you know, on a personal level can relate, relate to how that works too. I mean, oftentimes we see ourselves, you know, at on-demand storage trying to make these decisions and we have big aspirations for what we want to be. But, um, you know, when, when it comes time to make the investments you know, we have some hesitation because it's like, we don't really maybe understand the step-by-step -step process that goes into it. So it's like, all right, well, you know, let's wait till we can do all of it at once. You know, there's so much back and forth that you can go through. Um, but having the knowledge of like, you know, the money's, how the money plays into it is, is, is exactly what I think you need oftentimes. And that's, I'm sure why you're doing what you're doing because you've recognized like how important that could be. Yes, and, and admittedly just scratching the surface with where we are now, um, but excited to keep expanding that dialogue um, in the hopes that you know, we're really able to move this from, a, you know, I, I gave a talk at Babson last fall to really move from this kind of brand strategy, you know, marketing conversation to purpose driven as this is how I run my business. Um, and this is what that means. Um, and here are the results that I'm really able to get um, because we've, we've been able to enable that to happen versus um, a lot of what's happening right now where we're sort of, you know, everybody's demanding that this is what's happened, but nobody's really changed the, the, the tools that the companies are using. Yep. So, you know, they're, they're sort of having to fill in the gaps majestically, which I think is, is unfair. So let's go get them a tool that will make that um, more effective. For sure. For sure. So where can people find you, Katie, if they want to reach out and, and learn more about what you guys do or see some, you know, content that you put out there? First place to look is um, you can always find me on LinkedIn. Um, it's probably where I'm the most effective if people are interested in talking to me. I actually am very committed to like, if you reach out and you want to have a coffee, I will take one with you virtually these days. Um, the other place to go is the Matter 7 website, uh, as well as the Matter Pulse website. It has some really good information. And then the last place to look is I actually write a newsletter every month. Um, and it's usually a great place to get what I'm thinking about, um, good content recommendations, um, hopefully stuff that is all valuable to you. Um, and I will be launching a second newsletter specifically for people trying to run purpose-driven businesses on how they can do that better um, sometime in the month of February. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been great, Katie. I, I, um, I, love, I love having people on of different things and, and we haven't had anybody talk about branding, especially to this extent. So, I mean, it's Fabulous. something that um, I value tremendously and I um, appreciate all your helpful insight on it. And, and it seems like you guys are doing some amazing things. So congratulations on that and good luck, you know, moving forward. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for having me today and taking the time. I was really glad to uh, get to be here. Yeah, this has been great. So um, we'll stay in touch and talk soon. All right. Sounds wonderful. Thanks, Katie.